Thanks for joining me on Life and Surround, and Happy New Year. I thought I would get this year started for the channel by delivering on a video that I've been uh, promising for a while. It's basically a Streaming in Atmos 101. This by no means is going to answer all questions about Streaming in Atmos, but hopefully it will just further the conversation. Leave your questions, your advice, your experiences, and anything that you would like covered in the future in the comments below. One thing to keep in mind is this channel is oriented toward systems with discreetly placed speakers in the um, recommended Atmos and RO3D and 5.1 surround and quad locations. So this video is not oriented toward soundbars or AirPods or earbuds. Some of these devices can achieve a kind of Atmos. It certainly is marketed by Dolby as Atmos. But again, this channel is oriented toward systems that can discreetly play back sounds that are mixed into certain areas. In uh, 5.1, that would be around you. And then in Atmos, RO3D, DTSX, that would be around you and over you as well. So I'm going to just give some simple guidelines and the reason is that I get these questions all the time. So this 101 may um, just be obvious to some of you and if so, congratulations. Again, leave your comments below about how you would like the conversation extended. But uh, for today, I'm going to just give like a 101 what is required to enjoy discreetly played back streaming Atmos in your home. And I'm going to break this video up into services, devices, and systems. Okay, so let's start with services. As of the filming of this video, the services I am aware of that offer streaming Atmos or Dolby Audio, which is kind of like a streaming version of 5.1, are Apple Music, Tidal, Amazon Music. And I think Amazon, uh, you have to have like a premium package, and with Tidal, you have to have their at least their Hi-Fi package. Now, it is rumored that Atmos is coming to Spotify. I just haven't been able to find confirmation that that has been achieved yet. Though I know a lot of people who use Spotify, so that should uh, drive some happiness. Now, once you have downloaded the app for your chosen service, for me that would be Apple Music. I've tried Tidal and Apple Music, and Apple Music just had fewer bugs, and uh, is just a more enjoyable experience for me so far. I do know some people who are enjoying Tidal and I don't have a lot of information about Amazon Music at this point. But once you've downloaded the app, uh, you have to download it to a device that can support these streaming apps. And unfortunately, that's not like uh, many of the Blu-ray players that a lot of us already have, DVD players. It's gotta be a device like an Apple TV 4K. That is my chosen device at the moment because it works with Apple Music. You can try an Amazon Fire Stick 4K. I was using that back at the time that I was trying out Tidal and it worked just fine. You can also use an NVIDIA Shield. I've heard that you can use a Google Chromecast. And now we're talking about specifically for streaming music, surround and immersive music, Dolby Audio and Dolby Atmos. And on Apple, they sort of confuse the issue by calling all of that spatial audio. Uh, I think particularly for their earbuds, they add some secret sauce to kind of get sounds spread around. But when I have played back Dolby Atmos and Dolby Audio labeled albums, they sound to me um, like the compressed equivalent to the mixes that I know from Super Audio CDs and from Blu-rays. So I don't think Apple adds a lot of secret sauce to uh, some of these streaming albums. It pretty much is Atmos and 5.1 straight up. All right, so when you've selected your device, and um, if you are also interested in movies, 
be aware that devices like certain Xboxes and Rokus can achieve Atmos from certain like video streaming services, Hulu, Netflix, Disney Plus. Those are on the table if you are interested in Atmos for uh, movie, TV show, um, streaming video playback. But again, this video is oriented toward music and again, discreetly played back music on a you know speaker array. Uh, speakers arrayed around your room. Now, so you've got your service app downloaded to your device. These are HDMI devices. So bottom line in your system, you're going to need surround capability and um, you know Dolby surround or you know some sort of uh, Dolby technology of some sort. Uh, I think it can be pretty classic and vintage. The current offering is Dolby Surround, which covers everything from Dolby Digital 5.1 up to Atmos. But uh, I'm pretty sure that legacy Dolby, like, they've called their product different things over the years. I think it even started with Dolby Surround back in the 90s, and then it went through different incarnations. But if you're a receiver, if you're AVR, if your system can process Dolby, Atmos is backwards compatible all the way back to Dolby Digital 5.1. It works uh, with Dolby, Dolby True HD 5.1 and 7.1 as well. So you need a surround system with HDMI inputs, okay? Because like I said, these devices that run the service apps are HDMI devices. So um, bottom line, to get up and running, you gotta select a service, you generally need to subscribe to it, though some services offer a free or a discounted subscription for a month or 90 days, whatever the case may be. And then uh, you download the app to your device of choice. I've chosen an Apple TV 4K because it is the only one I'm aware of being compatible with Apple Music. Though if you want to try Tidal or another service, you can try a Fire Stick, an NVIDIA Shield, and some other devices. So then you plug your device into um, HDMI input on your system, and then you know your system needs to have some sort of a monitor, like a projector or a TV, something of that sort. So then you navigate to the device, you go um, fire up your service, you go look for some Dolby Atmos or Dolby Audio content, and so if you choose a Dolby Atmos album, like let's say the um, recent album from KISS, Destroyer, was released in Streaming Atmos, if you have a surround system like 4.0, 5.1, and on up that can process Dolby and uh, sufficient you know, HDMI connection so that it works with your device, then um, at the very least, Apple Music will uh, allow you to hear a downmixed version of that album. Of course, be, you know, if you don't have 9.1 or 11.2 or whatever speaker array, if you have 5.1, 7.1, you know, 7.2, etc., you will hear uh, the album downmixed from Dolby Atmos into, you know, Dolby's, you know, best possible rendition for your speaker array. You told your AVR, your receiver, where your speakers were at. And so um, Dolby knows what to do. It'll downmix for you. So you will be hearing, you know, Kiss Destroyer in surround, just not that full immersive Atmos array. For that, you need, you know, an Atmos speaker array. And then uh, beware that I've heard, and it was in my experience, that for title, you have to have Atmos capable equipment all the way down the chain. So we're not talking about an AVR that can do 5.1 Dolby with HDMI now. Now it has to be an AVR that can process Atmos. Otherwise, um, the title app will tell you, you know, Atmos compatibility not detected, and we're switching you over to the stereo version of this album. All right, so I'm not a salesman. I don't care what service you use. I don't care what device you use. I don't care what kind of system you have. I'm just trying to give a 101 on how to get up and running and avoid uh, some of the major 
you know, gotchas and snafus that I've heard about from friends and, and viewers and other surround enthusiasts over the last few months. So um, my, my guidance is to bite the bullet because it's a bit more expensive than, you know, the Fire Stick. Get an Apple TV 4K because it is uh, compatible with Apple Music. Those just happen to be my preferred service and devices at this time. If you want to try other services and want to spend probably about a quarter the cost, pick up you know a Fire Stick or I'm not even sure how much an Nvidia Shield or a Chromecast Ultra cost. So there are options, and this video isn't meant to tell you like the one way that you have to do this. If you're aware that you need to select a service, select a device, and um, integrate that into your system, and that you can have either a full you know, Atmos array experience or even down mix if you're using Apple Music. Those are the major points that I wanted to get across. And so, you know, before I leave you, I'll just um, kind of point out like here is my Apple TV 4K. It's just a little black box, HDMI and power. And um, that runs into my Denon Atmos receiver. And uh, my Dennis Atmos receiver is, um, you know, the channels are powered by some external amps. That's just how I've chosen to um, get the maximum efficiency, the least amount of distortion, the sound that I'm looking for on my budget. So lots of different ways to uh, achieve Atmos streaming and Dolby audio happiness. This is just uh, one way that I've pointed out. Hope this video is helpful. Again, what you would like to know further about streaming in Atmos, streaming in Dolby Audio, just leave your comments below and uh, we'll either discuss it there or I can shoot uh, subsequent videos. Whatever you all want to know, that's what I want to bring to you. And again, I hope you all are having a happy new year so far. I hope it's filled with lots of wonderful surround music. Um, along with editing this video, I'm going to head into my uh, music room and start enjoying uh, my surround master uh, sent to me by a, a beloved viewer and so uh, surround master um, auditioning and reviews uh, will be forthcoming along with some albums that i'm excited about uh, there is tons of amazing surround content to get to this year and i look forward to enjoying all of that with all of you and until next time, you know what to do. Live life in surround.